Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with MysticGenMara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And today is Samhain, 1031, everyone calls it Halloween. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of a discussion about things and then do a little relaxing meditation guided visualization, however you want to view that. Um, just kind of getting us a little bit of a different viewpoint on what this holiday is really about and what this Sabbath does really actually mean. There's more to it than just costumes and trick-or-treating. So, um, I have notes here, just a second, sorry. <laughs> the name of the Sabbath, is, which is a sacred holiday, as we've talked about with different ones through the years, um, it basically means end of summer is one of the general definitions of Samhain. Uh, it's a time when the veil between the worlds is very thin. With Beltane and Sawain, these are the two where the veils are thinner. With Beltane, it's believed to be primarily the fairy and the angelic realm, which is the veils that are thin. With Sawain, it's all of them. There's not really a gate or door that we couldn't access if you wanted to. Which makes it a little bit uh, intense at times. The emotions can be very high. The energy can be very uh, almost oppressive if you want to go there. But that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that there's a lot of it. So where with Beltane, it's about fairies, angels, fertility, new life. Samhain is more focused on the end of life, the end of the sun, the end of summer. And preserving and setting yourself up for cold times ahead which is something you know preparing for the future is always a good idea so the same thing with Beltane Samhain societal norms are kind of tossed out the window the rich are poor the poor act rich the slave becomes the master the master is the slave um, it's time to kind of step out of your normal everyday life and become someone else which is where a lot of our modern day versions of dec uh, decorating, <laughs> of dressing up for Halloween come from. Uh, they also believed back in the day that by disguising your features or disguising yourself as something else, it allowed the other spirits to not know who was human and who wasn't. This was their belief. Uh, and so that they could not get, you know, accidentally absconded with into another realm. Uh, in the old days, this was a period of time where you could cut loose. It wasn't required, but it was an option. Um, excess tended to be a big thing with this ha Sabbath as well as Beltane. But this was a time of celebration of the final harvest, saying goodbye to those who'd passed, celebrating the ancestors. And in some cases, this could be a very serious and sad time, but it wasn't meant to be morose. It was to be reverent, but to a point, <laughs> but it was also a time of if you were having emotional issues because you lost someone that was very close to you, this was a way for you to kind of grieve through the process and understand that life isn't just one aspect. Or this life that we have right now is not just the one aspect of our existence. It's a continuation. And that's when we come to Samhain, we understand that this life with this skin suit we have is a portion of who we are as an existing species, an existing spirit. When we cross the veil into the underworld, into the next life, however that looks, heaven, summerland, um, uh, Tartarus, whatever, <laughs> depending on where you're going, uh, when we cross into that, that's another part of our existence. This is only one aspect of it, and that's the beauty of Samhain is it shows you that yeah, you lost that person, and it's a very sad event. But remember the joys and the blessings and the happiness that you had with that person. Because as long as you can remember that, you'll understand that the person never really leaves in that respect. The One of the phrases I've heard before is one of the biggest ways to guarantee immortality is to be a loving memory in someone's heart. That's a way to keep that person alive. That's the reason a lot of people take Samhain and they impose this dark aspect to it of it's a sad time and we must be very morose and very serious and very... Or you could do what 
a lot of people are doing now, which is a celebration of life. Yes, it is sad, but why not enjoy the happy times? Yes, they're gone, but why not remember the joy that they brought you? So when you start getting into this aspect of it, Samhain is a unique one because there's a balance that you have to try to maintain with understanding that the grieving process is a long-term process. There are steps that you need to work through as you go through it, and you're going to go one, two, three, six, one, two, three, six, one, two, five, two. It's going to be a continual bouncing around with that grieving process. But using Samhain as a tool towards that is exceptionally beneficial because it allows you to understand that death is not really the end. It might be the end for the physical meat suit aspect of their existence, but it's not really the end of that person as long as you can remember the positive and remember the person in general, really. Uh, this is the third harvest in the ancient world, which would be classified primarily as the meat harvest, the butchering hunting season. Uh, the first was the fruits and summer crops, which was in August 1st. The second was grains, a lot of your root crops, not all of them, and some of your winter veggies, which was at Maybon, which was um, the autumn equinox, September 21st. This harvest is known for the gourds, the winter squash. This is usually a time when you'd be working your uh, bigger root crops, your potatoes, uh, parsnips, some carrots, sometimes you'd pull those sooner, but it depended on the year and what was going on. But this was kind of your last time. Everything came out of the ground at this point. Everything got put away. Your animals were butchered at this point. So this was a time of really intense preparation because you had the winter coming. You had this long, cold period that was starting to work forward. So you had a lot of things that you needed to get done. And that's the purpose of this. And generally, it was a week-long celebration or get-together with Sawain. So it wasn't just a one-day thing. It was a multitude of time around this window of existence. That being said, if you are someone who likes to do altars or home decorations, if you're not not comfortable setting up an altar or you're in a situation where you can't, you can always decorate your house with like leaves and acorns and uh, candles, specifically black ones or orange ones. Uh, putting up pictures of your ancestors and your family that have passed over is a great thing to do at this time. And if you're, as I said, I'm from Idaho, having horns and antlers and mounted heads around is just kind of how we <laughs> live here. But you can add those aspects for this time period. And the beauty of this is you can be preparing for the quiet time that comes between Sawain and Yule. This window of time, which in the United States we have Thanksgiving and um, more of a quiet period building up to Yule, when you have that quiet period, that's when the goddess is mourning. Her spouse, the Lord, has went into the underworld. He's dealing with all the <laughs> darkness and conquering all of that. But the, the sun, big sun in the sky, S-U-N, has went into darkness. So this is a time when you notice the days are getting really short. The temperatures are dropping rapidly. And it's a quiet period. The ladies in mourning, so the land is dying. The sun is going down and shrinking, basically. So this is a time for refreshing ourselves, resting, because we need it after the summer, obviously. And it's also a good time to start planting the seeds of what you want to build starting at Yule. So this is a good window of time to think about big, broad terms. Sawin is the time, in my mind anyway, to set the, the basic intentions. I want to be prosperous. I want to be in a loving relationship, I want to have a better job, my career, I want my career to be better. You're looking at things broad spectrum when you are planting the seeds at this point. Between now and Yule, this is a time to refine those wants, desires, and needs into very specific end game goals. What does prosperity look like to you? What kind of a spouse are you looking for? Um, what kind of a career change, growth, paycheck, etc. are you looking to build? That's the middle period. That's the things you can think about between now and Yule. Because at Yule, we start building our vision boards because that's when the sun returns. That's when life starts to come back to the world. We're still cold, but it takes time for the sun to mature. And when we talk about the sun at Yule, it's the returning solar infant has to grow into an adult. And so you have that growth period 
but if you're growing your intentions with the sun, it's a good way to remember what you're working on and how you're working on it. So this is a time for to start planting some of those seeds. The other thing, uh, as I have been meditating upon these discussions, is what do you want to release? What do you want to let go of at this time? Habits, self-talk that's negative, um, picking a better food source for your diet, whatever it is that you're looking at, what is it you want to re- let go of? This is a time to release it into the underworld, to let it go with the God into the darkness. He'll leave it down there where it belongs. You don't need to have that back. <laughs> and that's the part where we can start to really bring into focus we're celebrating those who have passed, we're letting go of things that no longer serve us or we no longer need, and we're planting seeds of the future. When you look at Sawain as a harvest period, you're doing all of that. You're, you're saying goodbye to the things of the past, the summer, the harvesting, the animals, you're setting yourself up for the future, you're p- putting up food, you're putting up meat, you are you know, stocking the house and the barn and woodshed and all that stuff with all the th- necessities you're going to need to survive through the winter but you're also taking time to rest because most of your busy work is done by this point and once all of the cleanup from Sawain is done it's basically you're feeding the animals and taking care of the home if you look back to the old days there was a little bit of hunting that still went on but it wasn't as intensive you didn't have anything to plant so a lot of what you were doing was indoors at this time so we have this pretty cool dynamic of what, are, what is this holiday about? It embraces everything in one holiday, which is unique because they don't all do this. <laughs> so as we're going forward here, um, I'm going to say this now and then when we get into the visualization, you'll understand more. I want you to think about one thing, just one, don't need to overwhelm yourself, one thing that you want to let go of, one thing that you are ready to release, to unburden yourself with because it's no longer necessary. One thing like that, and the second thing I want you to think about is seeds you want to plant for the future. So is it the prosperity, is it the abundance, is it the the new spouse or partner, is it um, job, career, house, whatever it is, in general terms. We're not looking at details right now, this is set planting a seed. So you're looking for a general concept. So one thing to let go of, and at least one thing that you want to plant going forward. So think about that as we move along here. When we look at Samhain, it is a time to commune with the ancestors. It is a time to say goodbye to those who've passed, and I keep saying that, I know, but it's also a time to greet those who are coming back as guides from the departed, people who are spirit guides, sometimes it's ancestors, sometimes it's spiritual ancestors, maybe not blood relation, but those who are within the spiritual path that you're on, or something along those lines. This is where you get into really focusing on paying attention. This particular week, with Sawain being the middle of a seven day period, um, pay attention to your dreams, pay attention to your gut instincts, those little breezes when you're in a room that shouldn't have a breeze, or you're hearing a voice that there's no one else around you. Pay attention to those. Don't don't look too far into it, but pay attention to it. Be like, what's being said? What am I hearing? Just so you can be aware that this is a time when things are a little bit different because the veils are so thin. Um, part of a, one way you can actually celebrate with your ancestors is to have a silent table or at least a silent si- uh, setting of at your, tab- at your main table where the seat remains empty, food gets put on the plate, but no one touches it. And that's a way for you to basically remind yourself that you have ancestors. You didn't just pop up here out of nowhere, and you've been guided through your ancestors and spirit guides through your entire life. When the evening is over and the celebration is over, that food is not to be consumed by anyone there. It is to be given as an offering to nature, toss it to the, you know, out in the field type thing, because it's meant for the basically the nutritional value out of it, is been consumed by the spirit guides and ancestors so it just needs to be tossed to the animals and then they can get what they need out of it Um, it's one of those things that it's kind of interesting to think about but this was a 
an older practice. I don't know how far back, but I do know that it was goes back a ways. So this is also a time where you can do um, long-term divination because the veil is thin. Secrets tend to sh be revealed at this time. So if there's something that you think you're hiding, <laughs> It could very well come to light at this point in the year because with the veils thin, you can't really hide from anything. The veils between worlds also are the veils of our auras and our energy fields, so it makes it harder for us to keep those things secret and that can trigger some shadow work, that can trigger some truth being uncovered and about situations, clearing blocks, opening your doors type thing. And this is where it's really good to stay grounded. You know, take your shoes off when you get home. Don't wear socks. Put your feet as close to the ground as possible. Um, if it's not <laughs> snowing and freezing, put your feet on the dirt outside. Just really keep yourself grounded through this week because things can get a little wonky and a little intense. It's just something to be aware of. And remember, you know, keep your breathing in your belly and deep. Don't breathe shallow but also stay grounded so that you can handle anything that comes up. And sometimes nothing comes up, which is the best part, <laughs> because you've, you've lived an authentic life, so you don't need to have that come up. Sometimes it comes up because it's a reminder, hey, you're not being fully authentic here. And it takes time, don't get me wrong, you're not gonna do it all in one lifetime, so just enjoy the ride type situation. Um, the other part of this holiday, or the Sabbath, is a transformative period. As the spirits of the ancestors are transformed into spirit guides, sometimes they're being cycled back through it if you believe in the reincarnation aspect of things. And this is a call for you to transform into a better version of yourself. You're releasing something that no longer serves you and you're planting seeds for future growth. So this is a way for you to look back and see how far you've come in the last 12 months but also where do you want to go in the next 12 months? So this is some time to look at a like some mirror work, see where you're at, see what you've done, um, starting to build your vision boards to be officially finished on uh, Yule, things like that. So just some processes to start working towards if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, where am I at? I completely just lost my notes. I hit the wrong button and my mouse is still messy, so it's <laughs> jarred everything all to pieces. So with that, there we are. Um, we will go ahead and just get started with our visualization. Um, what I'm going to do this time is a little bit, every time I do this, it ends up turning out in a different way. So I have, I have things written out, doesn't always follow that. Um, remember what it was you wanted to release and at least one thing you want to plant in general terms. So think about those as we start to do our breathing. Um, this will only be a short meditation, we won't go too long here. But take a couple of deep breaths, breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth. When you breathe in, breathe into your belly, your abdomen, feel it expand, filling yourself up with gentle white light. Exhale. Releasing all stress and tension from your day. Take another deep breath in through the nose, filling your belly with beautiful orange light. Exhale, releasing the tension, feeling your shoulders drop, settling into the chair that you're sitting in. Take another nice deep breath in, breathing in the beautiful oranges and pinks of a sunset. Exhale, feel yourself drift quietly into the center of your mind. From the center of your mind, still breathing deeply and clearly, you see a great oak door. As you approach the door, it swings silently open. You step through this door into a gentle night sky. You feel the sun has just set and the grass is chilling under your feet. You walk through the grassy meadow towards the circle of stones. 
Within the circle, there is a brilliant, warm fire burning. You step through the eastern gate and you gaze upon the fire. The bonfire of the Sabbath, the beautiful warming glow fills your soul. You step inside closer to the fire and you notice there's others around visiting, chatting. Some you recognize, some you don't. You walk amongst the participants, smiling, laughing, thinking about those who you've missed, remembering the good times, the funny stories, the antics from childhood, all the happiness that comes with them. You feel a slight bit of sadness because you feel that that person's no longer with you. As you continue this get to know and reacquaint yourself chatter, you hear a bell chime from the west. The western gate opens fully and in walks the lady escorted by the now elderly Lord. They come in smiling to each person, visiting, shaking hands, giving hugs. And you notice as the Lord goes by each person, he takes something from them. They offer it willingly and he places it in a pack on his back. As he goes around the collected group, you notice that there's others coming through the west gate. The western gate is the gateway of water and of those who have passed over, the land of the ancestors. Those who are coming through are the ancestors. As the Lord and Lady continue around the circle, you notice that the ancestors are milling about they're visiting, they're finding those loved ones. Many hugs and many tears are exchanged. Your ancestors come to you, embracing you. Everyone's laughing and crying at the same time because they're so overjoyed. Pictures of family members, of pets, of children are all being shown. Tales of the old days are being shared. You keep an eye on the Lord and Lady they're an imposing figure even in his older age. As your family and your ancestors visit and talk and just remember the good old days, messages that may be important for the future are passed from them to you. Little ideas, stories that you forgot are all being brought back to the surface. Eventually, the Lord makes it around the circle to where you're at. He stops next to you personally. The lady gives you a warm embrace. The Lord asks you, do you have anything that you would like me to leave in the underworld on my journey? You take the habit, the, whatever it is that you're wanting to release, and it's in a little black box and you hand it to the Lord. He adds it to his already heavy pack and he stoops under the weight. He gives you a quick embrace as he walks around the circle with the lady by his side, collecting similar little black boxes from others who are ready to release different habits, patterns, thought forms, and eventually, he makes it back to the western gate. The ancestors sense that their time has come to an end. Final hugs, final tears are passed between you and your ancestors. You look through your teary eyes and you wipe the tears away to notice that others are dealing with the same sorrows. The joy was so great but the sorrow is so deep. The ancestors slowly weave their way back towards the western gate. Through the gate they pass 
the Lord waits till the very last one goes through the western gates. He turns to the lady, and they embrace. You hear him say to her, This is not the end, my love. This is just a rest. I'll return when the sun begins to grow. My final kiss, and he steps through the veil of the western gate. It closes slowly behind him. And with a slight whoosh, the veils between worlds have closed again. The lady seeks to find comfort in all of those assembled. She goes around with a beautiful amethyst bowl. This amethyst bowl is collecting her tears, but she's also collecting the seeds of the future. From sorrow does growth occur. Sorrow feeds joy, joy feeds sorrow. Both are the same, but different. She comes around the circle to where you are, and you deposit your seeds, whether it's one or many. She smiles, pats you on the cheek, gives you a quick kiss to the forehead as she continues on. Her sorrow and her sadness are very deep, but she also has hope that in this Yule, the sun will return and her heart will be full once again. Before she leaves, carrying her amethyst bowl full of all the hopes, the dreams, the seeds to be planted, she tells everyone, remember this is a time for rest, for recuperation, for looking ahead to the joys and the blessings of the future. Zawain does not indicate the end completely. It indicates a rest before the new beginning. She steps through a door next to the western gate, returning to the stars in her home. You feel the fire slowly start to burn down to gentle coals. And from there, you realize it's time to return. You bid your companions and your acquaintances goodbye as you step through the eastern gate, walking slowly away from the warming fire. In the time you've been in the circle, the grass has grown crisp with frost and chill. You can see your air, your breath in the air. You hurry back to the great oak door, stepping back into the center of your mind, the great door closes behind you silently. You feel lighter for the letting go, but there's a little bit of sadness there because you got to see your ancestors and they had to return. As you breathe deeply, coming back into your body, into this now moment, you're aware that your ancestors are always around, you just may not see them. You inhale deeply, breathing in beautiful white light, exhaling, allowing your emotions to come to the surface, whatever is ready to be let go of, whether it's laughter or sadness. Take another deep breath in, and as you exhale, become more aware of your physical body, the room around you. Take another nice deep breath in, feeling the blood rushing through your veins, and as you exhale, wiggle your fingers and your toes. And whenever you're ready, bring yourself back into this moment, and you are opening your eyes feeling blessed, secure, and strong. Realizing that you've never been alone, you never are. Just because you can't see them doesn't mean they're not there. Take time this Sawain to remember the past, 
to look with hope upon the future. And never forget, death is not the end, it's just a transformation. Have a blessed and safe Sawe, everyone. <laughs>